Welcome to Unscripted with Russo. For our podcast, we decided to explore the people behind the narratives. I'll introduce decision makers and influencers and find out the intimate story behind their rise to success. Welcome to Unscripted with Russo. I'm Ashley Russo, and I'm very pleased to have you with us today because we are going to talk to a wonderful friend and collaborator of ASR Media, Marco Calderon. Marco owns Marco, Marco Calderon Photography. He is one of the people that I get most excited to see out and about in the community. Marco is has an infectious smile and a wonderful way about him, and I'm so glad he could join our podcast Unscripted audience here today. Marco, welcome. Thank you so much for inviting me. I'm happy to, to be here. Well, you are such a wild talent, and we're really lucky that you're in the Lehigh Valley. So we want to find out how you how you ended up here. I know that you grew up in Mexico. Tell me a little bit about where you grew up and your family, your parents, your siblings, a little bit just about what, what your life was like as a child. As a child, I was a happy child. I was a child connected to music from early years. I was a flute player. I was a musician for a couple of years. At the same time, I was bullied. I didn't know about the word bully, a bully until later, but I thought that it was part of growing up. It's not. And <laughs> my mom didn't even know because we didn't have access to that information of how to avoid being bullied. But that's how I learned a bunch of stuff. Um, I grew up in Toluca, uh, which is the capital of Mexico state. Just like in the United States, you have Washington DC and Washington state. We have Mexico City and we have Mexico state. So the capital of Mexico state is Toluca this is where I grew up. However, I was born in the East Coast, really close to the beach. I was born in Tamaulipas, but I was registered in Veracruz, which is the longest state of the Gulf of Mexico. My mom studied chemistry. So she moved to the capital of the state. She studied there. I grew up there. I studied communications, um, bachelor's. My sister is still in Mexico. I have a sister. Um, is she mom, younger or older than you? She's younger mm -hmm. uh, by almost four years. I have a niece and a nephew. Um, she's married. She's happy, uh, working, always working. I think something that my mom showed us from early early days is that uh, working pays off. Uh, pay your bills, don't borrow money if you don't have it. Uh, don't spend it if you don't can touch it. Such a good uh, lesson, right? You think about how many people get in trouble with credit yes. cards and debt. And, and, it's, and so it's, it's so simple, it's so simple. Be humble, work hard, and don't borrow money if you don't have how to pay. And that's kind of a way to, to, to be happy, it's simple. Yeah. Just you like, mentioned you mentioned playing the flute. Now, was were people in your family or your mother musical, or and how and if and how did you find that as an instrument that you enjoyed? Was it an opportunity at school? My dad uh, has been always a self-taught musician, a guitar player. It was a way for him to make money in Mexico. Uh, he studied architecture, and then he didn't finish, and then he was struggling with some personal issues. And in order to try to bring money to the house, he was playing in bars and restaurants, guitar that he self-taught. But he was always he was always practicing at home. So I think that that uh, connection with the sound and how he was trying to improve helped me to be connected with music. So someday I I found out about jazz music, and I wanted to be a saxophone player. And I went to the uh, school of music in Mexico, in Mexico uh, State, in Toluca. I remember my mom taking me to the practice classrooms, little tiny cubicles where musicians were practicing before or after the classes. And I was really focused. I want to be a jazz player. I want to be a saxophone player. And then before that, before meeting with my future teacher, um, I heard in the in the end of the uh, hallway, a flute player killing it. And I was like, that sounds sounds beautiful. I want to be like that guy. So that guy became my partner playing together for a while. And yeah, we became soloists. He was already one, 
and I practiced a lot. I actually got in trouble in high school because I was killing it in music, already do, playing some concerts with a, a piano player helping me like as a support musician, but I was being destroyed by my, my subjects in, in, in high school. And my mom actually asked me, Marco, pick one, because obviously you can't do both. She gave me the freedom to, to pick, uh, to select my path. And I was, eh, I like my friends, I have a girlfriend. Now I, ha I like hip hop, so I'm gonna pick high school. And I needed to quit music at that time. And eh, it's not something that I regret, but sometimes I wonder like, what if I would pick the other one? I guess I, I would never know in this universe. Maybe there is a parallel universe where I am a famous musician traveling. Right, you're I at Carnegie Hall or traveling the world or something I like that. I was doing but, a good job. But isn't it isn't it amazing how music and art and photography can be can be a part of your life? And ultimately the arts became your profession. Um, but you, you chose that sort of academic path. How did that help you? Like, how did it help you solidify that education was important? And how did you prioritize your time differently once you'd made that decision? It was difficult to make that decision. I actually found, found out later that I was having a, a situation where my teacher, uh, his name was Sergei Okin Girnova Dotsenko. He was a Russian teacher. I had a really difficult situation dealing with his style of teaching. I was finding uh, myself really, really uh, anxious about this class. So it was a difficult situation to say goodbye to that experience of being taught in this particular discipline. But that stayed in me, I think, my whole life when I was in college, uh, learning how to make documentaries. And I was always uh, focused on, if I would be working in a team, I was always picking, let me put the music behind the scenes. Let me select music to document, to make the scene, uh, to, to create the atmosphere of that particular transition of that interview because I was always connected with music from the very beginning and I think till, the, till today the house is full of instruments my kids they still see me playing flute not in the same way or the same level I'm still playing the same things that I played 30 years ago because I didn't grow more I'm sure it's amazing and beautiful though and what a great example and I know I've seen some of the videos that you post with your boys and I think sharing that love of music my husband is self-taught guitar and drums so he would tell you he is not good I don't play a musical instrument. I think he's amazing. And now I've got a daughter who plays the ukulele, also self-taught. She knows over like 50 songs on her own, but it's something they do together. And so they spend time together with it. And to me, I think that's more important in the scheme of life, obviously, unless it's your profession, than any other thing could be, right? That time that it affords you with family or friends is so valuable. So if, if they can get a little bit inspired of what it's arts about, not necessarily music, but just how emotions and uh, even feelings can be attached to a particular activity or even a profession, I think that goes beyond the actual worth work because you put yourself in. And I think sometimes that's what we need to enjoy more what we do. And I, ho I hope that they, they find something that is a passion for them instead of just a job. And if it's something related to the arts, if they can pay their bills, I'm gonna be all for it. I love it, Marco. Well, we're gonna take a quick break, but when we come back, I wanna hear a little bit more about your journey and the things that you did that led you to the path and to where you are now, which I think is really living your inspiration and living your passion and your dream is such a great example of that. So stick with us. This is Unscripted with Russo. We'll be right back. There's nothing like wintertime in the Christmas city, but any time of year, Bethlehem's rich history, culture, food, and fun make it a great hangout spot. Take a walk on the artsy South Side, catch a great band at Steel Stacks, or enjoy the quaint history of Hotel Bethlehem. There are so many options, but before you book your trip, head over to Facebook and like Lehigh Valley PA. Before you know it, you'll have a full itinerary of places you won't want to miss. 
Welcome back. If you're just joining us, I'm here with Marco Calderon. He is a local photographer in the Lehigh Valley, an amazing talent and a good friend to ASR Media. Marco, we're so happy that you're here and sharing your story with us. It is a special and unique one. Um, you mentioned going to college and studying communications, which then led to some really sort of interesting work on political campaigns. So tell us about that next middle stage of life, let's call it. I was working for the University of Veracruz and the University of Mexico State doing some documentary work in the north of Mexico. And I kind of found myself really connected with photography at that time, but also telling stories, something that I didn't know before, I think until I was trying to convey this particular work for these schools. But, and then when I came back to Mexico State from the North, uh, somebody invited me to be part of a campaign. And I said, sure, I don't know what I'm doing. If you allow me to be that, because I don't have previous experience doing anything, but I can support shooting pictures and writing for the newspapers. My press releases of this candidate What's his name again? And he became my boss for two campaigns. He ran twice. We lost the first one, but he liked that I was focused on making him look good and being honest because my job was to be honest about his lies. <laughs> and <laughs> so sometimes that, that's how we work. Like this is the reality. You need to still show him as a positive member of the community. And that was difficult along with the party that he was representing, a party that I don't even really like, but I was liking the guy. So it was a, a conflict, constant. really. You, you were in conflict, but at the absolutely. same time, it's so tough when you're young and starting out because you need to take opportunities and not every opportunity necessarily aligns with your belief system or where you're at. And I think you absolutely. learned that over time, right? What's important absolutely. to you. I work for the government. When, when he lost, he became a... Department of Labor secretary for uh, almost three years. And he gave me the job of his press guy for that particular job, which gave me a lot of experience. And again, learned that I was mostly focused on the media side than the government side, because yeah, government in Mexico at least lies a lot and try to always protect the- That never happens here, Marco. <laughs> <laughs> protects the, the, the image of the person in power. And I didn't like that. So just when I was dealing with this situation of my own values, is when I traveled for a vacation trip to Puerto Escondido, Oaxaca in Mexico, which is the other coast of Mexico in the Pacific Ocean. And is when I, without trying to find anyone in my life, I found my wife in this particular hostel. I was paying $10 a night in one hostel. It was, I was the only Mexican in this hostel. Uh, the people that was actually using the hostel, they thought that I was working in the hostel for them. They were like, no, I'm just a local guy that I'm pretending to be a surfer. I'm not a surfer. In my room, we were like four surfers, and one uh, wannabe surfer, me, everybody from New Zealand, and this Mexican guy just by myself. And in this, in this place, I met, well, my wife now. She was also traveling. Uh, she used to work in Honduras at that time. And she was traveling in the same kind of uh, holidays um, in Mexico. And yeah, we met there. She's from, yes. Well, I just want to ask you because at the time, did you speak English or did she speak Spanish? How did you guys communicate? She had a particular set of statements and uh, words and directions like take me to the Las Flores Park for the tax, taxi driver in Honduras in Spanish. She had specific words to find herself back in her house and buy uh, food, but that's it. And I knew a lot of songs from Radiohead and the Beatles, and I knew some uh, phrases like you complete me from Tom Cruise. Uh, Jerry Maguire. <laughs> Jerry Maguire. Things like that, that helped me to realize that I was almost near to zero in order to, to, give, to be able to have a conversation for real with a person. So it was, it was challenging from the very beginning. She 
she knew bad words, a lot of bad words. She, and I was like, no, don't say don't that. Don't use those, right. Not no, like I, I, also, the same way, don't say you complete me, Marco. Okay, deal. Like, <laughs> but was it was it love at first sight? Was it a connection and instant? You know, people wonder when there isn't the language commonality, and people think they have to overthink and talk everything. What was that initial connection, and how did that develop? The initial connection was me trying to help her to get rid of a guy that was bothering her uh, in the hostel. This guy was. Uh, clearly had some intentions that she didn't have. She, uh, and I noticed that. I was just uh, hanging out with some guys from Argentina and I look at her struggling with this guy being a little bit physical and noticeably she was not happy with that intention. So I felt intentionally trying to if, uh, uh, challenge instinctively. To, to interfere a little bit. So to pretend that I met her before or something and be in the middle of them, then she could be like more comfortable with somebody else that I was not trying to, to do the same thing, but I was trying to help and the other guy in some point left. And- You know, so knowing you, you, you genuinely are one of the nicest, genuinely nice, kind, warm gentlemen that mm -hmm. I've ever known. And I think everyone who meets you feels the same way. I know certainly our whole team does and everyone we work with coll collectively, you and I. Um, so I love the fact that you, you you basically met your wife being the knight in shining armor and the good guy who just had to stand up to someone. So that's amazing to me, Mark. Yeah, I love that. I learned that his name was also Marco that was trying to, yeah, he and my wife now. At that time, I didn't even know how to say anything after that. The guy left and we tried to talk. And we, the trying, the trying, the trying, I think we, we start enjoying our company. We say goodbye. Uh, the next day I saw her reading a book in the hammock and then we start talking. And then, yeah, we ended having a conversation. I do this because yeah, it was just me trying to say things. I ended singing. Um, War, you knew words in English. Yeah, I love it. Though it was in Spanish. Oh, she, wow, was, okay. Yeah, yeah. I find that now romantic, but maybe it was, it was cheesy, but she was hanging out with me and I was like, nope, okay. I think it's romantic. And I think that's she, a good, good moves, good moves, Marco. <laughs> I didn't have words to say, so I say I was singing. Um, so you yeah. now, is your, is your wife the reason that you came to America? Totally. Yeah, America was never in my map. I was full of bad stereotypes, I think, because I didn't have enough information about this country. Um, I Basic stereotypes that you learn in, in movies, I didn't travel before, uh, so I didn't know enough about American as a community, but the things that you learn in movies, I used to work in Blockbuster in Mexico, so I had access to a lot of movies, so I learned that there are only five places in this country, New York, Los Angeles, somewhere named Chicago, and maybe Minnesota and Miami. Those were my five middle points. Yeah, it's, and amazing. Maybe in it's amazing though, how kind of universal it is that cultures judge other cultures on the pop culture that we see, right? The music, the movies, the, 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 the personas that you see, that, that seems and, to be very common. And and the yeah. and the races, right? Like Mexicans are portrayed this way, African American, white people, and the relationships that you watch in movies sometimes, oh well, not sometimes, most of the times are not exactly not accurate. well. Yeah. Portrayed. So so I never thought like, why do you want to be in the United States? You're Mexican, like, you don't you're not wanted there. So I never thought like Mexico, United States. Ah yes, I'm gonna go to United States. However, after I met my wife. Uh, phone conversations, we traveled, we met in Costa Rica, we met in Honduras, we talked about being together. She wanted to live in Mexico. I said, yes, but we need to think about like paying what you need to pay from your own student loans. If you pay that in pesos, it's not that smart because you need to pay that in dollars. So that was the initial plan to come to the States 
And, and where is your wife from in the States? She was born in Washington State. Okay, so how the Lehigh Valley? She moved to Bemidji, Minnesota for high school and college. And then she went to do her master's in Ohio, master, uh, Ohio State University. And then when, after she met me, she was about to start her PhD and she started asking for jobs when we realized that it was smarter to work here in the States. So she sent her resumes everywhere as a social geographer that she is. And Mullenberg College ha hired her. Uh, so she asked me, like, do you want to live in Allentown? I said, sure. You're like, it's let good me, as any, it's as good. Let me Google it. Boop, 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 boop. Let me Google it. Uh, oh, you're, yeah, Allentown sounds like Georgetown. But I you basically it. both came the same distance, right? I mean, she came across the country and you came up from Mexico yeah. and you've met in Allentown. I love that. Well, we're going to take a quick break, but when we come back, I want to hear about um, the early days here in Allentown, your starting of the business, and then your quest for your citizenship and, and that journey, because it's been um, cool to be your friend in the last few years and see that journey unfold. Uh, and we're going to tell people more about that. So stay tuned with us. You don't want to miss part three with Marco Calderon. This is Unscripted with Musa. Time to take your workout outdoors. Discover Lehigh Valley is a great resource for finding easily accessible nature trails with stunning views and challenging terrain. Whether you're exploring the Delaware and Lehigh Trail or going for a jog on the Ironton Rail Trail, explore Discover Lehigh Valley to get you started. Follow them on Instagram, Lehigh Valley PA. Welcome back to Unscripted. I'm Ashley Russo. I'm being joined by Marco Calderon, and he's telling us a little bit about his journey from a child in Mexico to studying communications, working on political campaigns, to meeting his wife on the west coast of Mexico in a hostel. And that is ultimately what brought him to not only America, but to Allentown and the Lehigh Valley. And we are so lucky. So Marco, continue the journey. You, you move up here. You never plan to come to the United States. You don't really speak English. How do you make it all work? Well, 12 years ago, I, uh, I moved to Allentown. I remember it was August, it was hot. Uh, really, it felt dry that day. I remember the Saikidas sound, the, in the, 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 these insects in the, in the trees. I remember that day particularly, really steamy hot. And yeah, knowing that I couldn't work yet because my green card, it was in process. So I needed to start feeling myself somehow uh, productive and useful because I was, uh, that's in my DNA, DNA, I guess. And I started asking for opportunities to, to volunteer uh, because I learned that how wonderful is the volunteerism tradition and values in this county. I don't know if in the whole country, but at least, at least in Lehigh Valley have been always surprised like, how many people want to just volunteer. And I love that part. So I was uh, willing and happy to offer my help with no English. So I tried to find somewhere to work or to uh, ask without needing to talk. Because I knew that in, I was not able to speak in English yet. So I started volunteering as a projectionist at the Civic Theater of Allentown. When I got my social security number and my green card and everything, actually the, C the Civic Theater asked like, do you want to get paid? And I said, let me think about it. Yes, and <laughs> that was my first job. I was projecting movies. And it's such a great place, the Civic Theater. You know, it serves such an important need in our community and, for, for, you know, with the arts and it's small and intimate and, and important here. One thing I didn't know is that you, you and I kind of had that same experience. Now, I only moved an hour away from New Jersey, but I was so taken in my early days here, and I'm here um, 16 years, how much this community cared about its community and the volunteerism was so strong in all of these organizations that were kind of around every corner. Um, and so volunteering was actually the first thing I did when I came here as well, because I'd left my entire professional network um, that was in New York at the time out here with, with two small kids. So I love that. I didn't, I didn't know that, but it, it doesn't surprise me, Marco, knowing sort of our connection, that that was, that was the first thing that struck you. And at the same time, I was learning English. I, somebody told me, Marco, you need to learn English. Otherwise, you won't make it. Even though downtown Allentown, 
uh, is packed with people that can speak both languages. If you want to succeed, it's just a good advice, study English. Where were you doing that? Uh, the Literacy Center. It's a hard word to pronounce forever. I don't think- I'm We got a Literacy Center in Allentown. That place. Uh, I it, which is a great English, organization. English classes for over two years and a half. I was disciplined. I was learning to a bunch of podcasters and uh, movies in English with no subtitles to try to understand. Mm, when I finished, they tried to uh, get my voice for an interview in uh, Channel 69. By the end of the interview, they asked me, do you want to say thank you to United Way? And I say, yes, but why? Ah, okay, let me explain. They paid for your class. So yes, of course, United Way, thank you That's so much for your That's the original connection to learning what United That's Way That's the original connection. That's the original wow, connection. that's amazing. I did not know that piece and of the story. After that, United Way contacted me. Do you want to volunteer for Day of Caring? Of course, I want to volunteer forever with you guys because you pay for my English class. I'm always trying to give back because that's, again, it's karma. I think if you don't pay back or you don't pay forward, what's the point? Um, so that's how I started connecting with some organizations and at some point, remember me as a photographer now because I was trying to take pictures. Uh, I found myself trying to take pictures instead talking because it was my way to communicate without words and it worked out. I became a, a, a photographer in the mornings and a projectionist in the, uh, in the evenings, nights with Civic Theater of Allentown for three years, uh, saving all my money to buy equipment. And yeah, I started shooting events and weddings and quinceañeras and yep, that's how I-, I How did you ended. get the word out about the business? Like what was, was it mostly word of mouth advertising? How did you, you know, people think all the time, I have something I'm passionate about and I have this business idea. And then they don't know where to start. So what's your best advice to someone on how to start and do what they're passionate about and make it into an actual enterprise if that's what they're interested in doing? First, uh, even if they don't love the job they're doing, they, don't, they shouldn't quit yet. Uh, be always producing something. I had uh, the opportunity to either work or create my own uh, projects that allowed me to put my word out, like creating projects with Old Allentown Preservation Association or with ACLU in Pennsylvania. Particularly, they had a, 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 an office in Allentown at that time. As an immigrant, I had the opportunity to develop a project uh, of immigrants uh, that kept me busy finding my way uh, through my searching of my own style of photography of portraits. I found myself that I love people of all races. I love interviewing people. And if I have the chance to take their pictures, it's even better, that's my dream. And that's why I take pictures of people every single day if I can. So I found myself doing that. The more I was trying paid or not paid, I was creating my own portfolio. And if somebody would ask me for a business card, I always had one in my hand. I had a website ready, but I didn't pay for self promotion i think uh, trying to be myself i don't know if i am a, a completely transparent but i try uh, being authentic gave me the chance to to be remembered i guess you also have i think tremendous work ethic you know it's very obvious you do i mentioned very early on when i introduced you that you do have this infectious smile you have kind of an aura about you that lights up a room it makes people it's interesting because I want to describe to people who don't know you, it's not in, in an overt um, attention seeking way. Say maybe the way I enter a room, you enter in this very humble, joyful, you're so happy to be a part of things and you're quiet in the background being this stealth photographer, you, you get so many beautiful, interesting shots. I, I especially love um, your event photography that's just in the moment. I think you have this amazing ability to understand um, the feeling of an event and the feeling that goes on and you capture that in your photography. So I think you're incredibly authentic and your passion shows through. But the message I love, Marco, is, is the hard work and the just keep moving forward, like do something. Do yeah, something. I think it's like water, I think. If you don't move, 
we start to think, I think. So even, even though we don't know where we're gonna go tomorrow, keep moving forward. I think every single step, like like running, I think even I have my, my bad days running, running days that are not that good. I know that in the long term, even the, even the bad days are gonna pay off. So never taking anything for granted, being thankful and keep moving, I think takes those places. Well, you know, you, you moved here, you talked about meeting your wife, moving here, getting married, and now you have these two amazing boys. So tell us a little bit about your family and I guess kind of your journey as a parent. I have two kids, uh, Kana is eight, Luca is five. Uh, it's amazing. Um, it's a challenge always, every single day. Um, that cliche of the time goes, the time runs fast or flies is true. But I think the more I see myself being self-aware of my time and my work and my blocks of time during the day, the more present I feel that I can become with them, then I don't take their time in my life for granted. I always try to see them as my best friends. I hope they can see me like that in the future. It's not an expectation, it's just a hope. And uh, trying to teach them stuff that I'm still learning, like being humble, being self-aware, being happy, or at least content or what we do and being free, um, something that, I don't think my mom learned from her mom because they were different times. So consequently, my mom didn't teach me that necessarily as a concept, but because I think I have it now, I want to share it with them. Maybe their life is gonna be not easier. I don't want their life to be easy because I don't think that easy lives uh, make us grow, but I want them to be sure that they're strong to be able to interact with a life that it's not gonna never, never be easy for, for sure. Um, How important so, was that journey, the journey to citizenship for you as a part of all of this with, with raising your family and the, that freedom and that understanding of the things you're trying to instill in your, in your kids? Citizenship, it's, uh, it was never in my mind in the back before because I was already comfortably uh, working as a business owner of my own image, my own company. Uh, however, um, yeah, I, I felt personally uh, involved in the, with an intention to, to, to participate in the political spectrum uh, since four years ago. Uh, so I became a citizen intentionally to try to, to vote, to be able to, to have a voice, to always say uh, what I think with an intention and an impact. Uh, sometimes intentions are good, but having an impact is better. And I think by voting, I realized that connection of my intention and my impact. Uh, so that was my first intention, I'm not gonna lie. It was completely uh, a personal intentional move that uh, helped me to show them as an example that if you study a lot, well, you pass the test because it's a lot of studying. It's a lot of mem memorizing some data <laughs> and also believing in what it means to be a citizen, uh, not just for the fact that I wanted to vote. I think loving a country, it's super important. Uh, I love two countries now. I have changed my mind about this one, definitely from the, my deep roots of misunderstanding and ignorance. And I think my kids are learning that part too. Uh, to be able to love this country, but also if you disagree, you can have a voice and say, hey, I have something to say. What an amazing example you are to them and to all of us, Marco. Before I let you go, you talk about loving the country. I know you also love the Lehigh Valley. So I just want to ask you, what do you love about the Lehigh Valley? Lehigh Valley has been super welcome, not just to me, to my family, to my accent, to my color, to my love for tacos, for my intentional work. Uh, Lehigh Valley is really plural and it's not just because the demographics, it's because if you work hard, people remember you. That's my experience. If you are nice, people remember you and then that's, the energy keeps flowing. 
uh, I think people in the Lehigh Valley in general don't take things for granted. And that's something that I, I appreciate and gives me energy every single day. I feel welcome I, from the very beginning. Yes, I have had a couple of bad experiences, but it's not part of my life. It's just part of my uh, growing uh, experiences. Um, and I don't take that anything personal. Uh, Lehigh Valley, it's, it, yeah, it, it's been the best place to start living in the country and I don't see myself living anywhere else. Do you have a favorite place that you like to photograph? I know that's probably hard. You photograph so many things and places and people, but is there something that every time and somewhere that when you go, you're always inspired? The ocean in the Lehigh Valley, we don't have an ocean, but uh, I like parks. I like uh, good light from the shadows from the trees. I like good trees like uh, Jacobsburg Park. That's one of my favorite places to, to photograph Jacobsburg my family. is so beautiful. So uh, I, I love tall trees, and I think we have uh, we're super lucky to, to 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 in my case I am I feel super lucky that I live in Allentown, where you have in 15 minutes one of the most beautiful parks that you can just photograph with a creek, with a mountain, with some hawks, with some fox, in 15 minutes around this house next to the center of a downtown that is uh, alive as well. So yeah, I'm lucky. What about food? What do you love to eat here? Are there any places that are, are that you really love to frequent or that you take your family? I like supporting local businesses and I don't want to sound biased because they are my neighbors, but I love Union and Fitch. I love that restaurant because it's in the corner of the neighborhood. They are not a chain. I know their families, uh, owners, and I think it's yummy as well. Um, that's one of my favorite places to eat. Um, I like Mexican food. I like uh, really good Mexican, like handmade tacos that are not necessarily Tex-Mex, which I respect, but I don't love. Can we uh, find in, those? Where can we find those, Marco, in the Lehigh Valley? There's a place people. in Easton named La Plaza, which is different than La Placita, which is here in Allentown. I like them, but I like better the ones in Easton. It's a really low key place. You need to bring cash. Don't expect necessarily the biggest smiles, but yes, the real flavors. But and good food, good, good food. Good food and All right, you heard it here, Marco. So you gave us that. All right, before we let you go, we're gonna do a little section called rapid fire. So I wanna confirm with the audience, you have not heard these questions. I don't know what you're talking about. Okay, you have not heard these questions. I'm going to ask you a question. You're just going to give me a quick answer of what comes to the top of your mind. Are you ready? Sure. All right. What is your favorite hobby? Running. What is one food you couldn't live without? Tacos. What actor would you cast to play you in a movie about your life? Hugh Grant. With this British accent, I love it. If you did not have the job you have now, what would you be doing instead? Photography for National Geographic. And name one person who inspires you. My mom. Beautiful. Marco Calderon, thank you so much for being our guest on Unscripted. Thank you so much for your, your light and your love of the Lehigh Valley and sharing your talents with all of us. Um, it's a gift to know you and call you a friend. So thank you for being here. Thank you. I had a lot of fun. Appreciate it. Everyone, thanks for listening. Until next time, this is Unscripted.